Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue. And today we're gonna to be pretty short and sweet as we're really just covering one thing, which is how do I know if my temp gauge is lying to me? And believe me, it does happen, particularly at two spots in the year, spring and fall. A few short days ago, we were in swimsuits and enjoying the pool. A few days later, we almost have a frost warning at night. And it is this type of weather pattern that can throw the temperature gauges on our Kamado Joe for a bit of a loop. Now, how do you know if your temperature gauge is maybe misleading you? And so I often use my meter wireless probe and I start noticing a bigger difference between the ambient temperature that the meter is saying and what my eyes are seeing when I look at the outside of my Kamado Joe. I'm okay normally if there's about a 10 degree difference because depending on where we are on the grate and the dome, it's very seldom going to be exactly the same number and that's all right. But if it starts to start to get a wider gap where you're 20 degrees, 30 degrees different, signs are one of two things are off. Either our meter probe is lying to us or our Komodo Joe temperature gauge is lying to us. And in 10 years, it's never been the digital equipment that's lying. It's always been the metal components that have been subjected to either high heat cooks or really cold nights and everything in between that just causes them to work their way outside of calibration a little bit. Good news is Kamado Joe and their wisdom knows that this happens and they give us a temperature gauge that you can go ahead and adjust. It's really easy to do. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do in today's video. So before we start making some adjustments, the first order of business is just to go ahead and get the temperature gauge outside of your Kamado Joe. And since they often come, uh, at least I think all of mine did, pre-installed, you may not be familiar with how they're actually in there. All you need is a half inch wrench and you're good to go. So inside the dome on the Kamado Joe, you'll see a nut and a washer. And all you need to do is just loosen that slightly and you can do the rest with your hand if you like and set that hardware aside. Today I'm going to be checking all three just to make sure that they're accurate and it's just easier to do it uh, all at once. So once we've got our temperature gauges removed, save your hardware in a soft spot so it doesn't fall down in the deck or you lose it somewhere uh, in between. And then you're going to want to head inside and start boiling some water. Now, if you're really extreme elevation, you'll wanna go ahead and adjust uh, your, your temperatures uh, based on your altitude. Uh, but for where I am in sea level, 100 degrees Celsius, 200 degree, 212 degrees uh, Fahrenheit is the perfect temperature to validate that boiling water and our temp gauge should be reading exactly the same thing. So while the water's coming up to a boil, you're gonna want to go ahead and get yourself uh, a couple things. The first thing that I like to have nearby is just um, a, a dish towel so I can set the temperature gauges without scratching the finish or anything like that. Uh, you're also going to want a Phillips head screwdriver. And so just quick, you remember our lefty loosey righty tighty, lefty loosey is going to increase the temperature. So if, if we have it in boiling water and it's reading 80, degrees Fahrenheit, for example, or Celsius, you want to go ahead and adjust the set screw on the back to the left. And the opposite of that, if it's reading 120 degrees Celsius and it should be reading 100 degrees Celsius, we're gonna go ahead and turn that screw to the right and that will reduce it. I mentioned that because it's hard the first few times that you do this, where you get a reading, you're like, okay, I need to make an adjustment. You remove it from the boiling water, you look at the back, and you adjust the screw and you don't actually know which way it's going. And with something as hot as the metal on the gauge after boiling water, I uh, hope that saves you a little bit of juggling around the hot components. So just looking at the three that we did here uh, today really quickly, I think the most we're out is about 20 to 30 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So definitely the information we were getting from our meter helped us realize that we needed to go ahead and make that adjustment. Now, while you have some water boiling, I just like to use that steam and a paper towel to go ahead and clean off the outside of your uh, temperature gauge. 
And I almost forgot uh, the last two pieces of equipment that I showed in the video that you're gonna want is um, something to hold the probes. The metal is not sitting on the bottom. You just want that sitting in the uh, boiling water itself. So I'm just using some kitchen tongs for that that have a good grip, won't drop it and splash me with any hot water. And the maybe most important piece of equipment in this test is those high heat gloves. And so these are rated to about 930 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Can't hold hot things forever, uh, but more than enough for what we need to do today. So that's it. So once we've got our gauges adjusted, all that's left is to come back outside and start to reinstall these. I like to finger tighten them at first, then close the dome so I can see where it's lined up and just go ahead and give that a little bit of a tighten with that wrench at the end. Uh, you do this especially if you use a cover and some of that resistance of the cover going on and off could cause your gauge to spin, but you don't need it any tighter than that. We don't want to end up damaging the ceramics. Anyways, that's it for today's video. I mentioned it would be short and sweet. I hope you really enjoyed it and it helps you uh, sort of not get misled by your temperature gauge where you start going from one cook to another and all of a sudden, you know, the gauge settings that you used to use aren't getting the same temperature. It might not be you and your settings, your charcoal, it might be the gauge itself. And so this is just one less variable that you need to worry about and be able to rock your backyard barbecue cooks next time. If you like this video, please go ahead and smash that like button as well as hit subscribe and turn on that notification bell to catch future videos. Until then, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue signing off. Don't be afraid to fire it up.